In this video, I'd like to show you a tool called Power Query because it's a very useful tool that can save you a ton of time on preparing data for analysis. And I'll use the file on the screen as an example. If we look at this file, we can see that the first four rows of data are one order. There are four line items within this order, so the customer ordered four different things. The problem is, is that when we extract this data from the system, you'll notice that the customer name, phone number, full address, and I have a country column just off the screen, they only appear in the first line. They are not duplicated down below. So why is this an issue? If we now want to roll up total sales by customer, this 5151 will be assigned to online diecast creations, but the other three line items in that customer's order are going to roll up under a blank customer name. So our totals are not going to be correct. So how do we fix this? We can certainly copy and paste and copy and paste and copy and paste, but believe me, when your file has hundreds of thousands of records in it, that's going to take you all day. You can actually do this in seconds if you use Power Query. So how do we now start to use Power Query to play with this file? We don't actually start with this file. We're going to start with a blank sheet. So let me start with a blank sheet. And the first thing we do is we tell Excel we would like to go get some data. And we're going to go get that Excel file we were just looking at. And we tell it we would like to import that information. So it's connected to that file. And what it's actually showing us on the screen is that I have one tab within that file, and it's called Sales Order Data. If I click on this, you'll notice that off to the right, it actually gives me a preview of the contents of my file. And again, we can see the missing customer names, phone numbers. And we see we have another issue. If we look at the full address column, we have both the street name the city, the state, and the zip all bunched together. So they are concatenated, and they are separated by commas. If we want to try and roll up our sales by city, sales by state, sales by zip code, this is going to be a problem unless we can splice off the individual pieces. But that's OK, because I'm going to show you how Power Query will let you do that too. Now, if I just click on Load, it's just going to load that data as is. I actually want to manipulate this information and transform it before I pull it in. So I'm going to click on Transform Data. So what you now see on the screen is it has launched the Power Query Editor, which is a separate window from Excel. And right now, we can see exactly what our file currently looks like. So let's start to do some steps here. Now you can see that it's already put in a few steps already for us. This first step was telling it where the file is. You can see there's my tab, Sales Order Data. It knows where to go get the information. And see the headers? The headers are actually down on Data Row 1. We want them to be up here as column headers. So it automatically promoted the headers. If it ever doesn't do that for you, that's how you move it up. Just click Promote Headers. And then it's actually changed one of my file types. So it has actually changed my order number to be a number instead of something like text or a generic type of data type. So let's now do some of the manipulations that we want to do with this file. So the first issue we had was with the customer name. You can see it's pulled in all these blanks, so they are actually coming in as null. If I highlight this column and I want to transform it, see this one here? It says fill. It's actually going to fill the data either up or down for me. You can see I have the choice. Now in my particular case, I want it to take that customer name and push it down until it reaches the next one. I don't want to go up. So we click the button, and here we go. We have now gotten rid of all of those nulls. And very quick work, two seconds as compared to copy paste, copy paste for hours trying to manipulate your file. We can do the same here. If we want to fill down the phone number, 
fill down the address. And you can probably select multiple columns at once, but I'll just give you a demonstration here. So now we've got all of our information filled in. So we could load it like this and then start to work with it and make our data visualizations, but let's do a little bit more to it. Now one thing I'll show you, see right here? So this Power Query has already detected that this is a date. It's already detected that this is a decimal number. So it tries to guess what type of information you actually have, but you can force it to change that if some of them are incorrect. Now let's suppose we want to deal with our address first. If we click here on the address, again, it's all bunched together with these commas. So we need to find the one that is actually going to split that information apart for us. And right here, see under text column, we've got split column by the delimiter. Now a delimiter is just a character that we're using to split our information. It's automatically detected for me that mine is likely split by commas, and it is. If it was something different, you have the option to choose anything you wish, and you can even use a custom character if by some reason you have something like a slash or something very strange that is going to split your data. Now we have three choices. I'm going to keep each occurrence of the delimiter, so that's going to split apart this field every single time it finds a comma. If I only wanted to split apart this first piece and stop at the first comma, I would pick leftmost delimiter. And similarly, if I wanted to have it stop and only split at the very last comma, then I would pick a rightmost delimiter. But I'll leave it as everything because I want to split these into multiple columns. So now we take a look at our data and you can see we've got the street, we've got the city, we've got the state, we've got the zip code. Now, it has split the field names. See, it's full address one, full address two, full address three, full address four. You can actually right click, and this is one of the steps. And somewhere we have rename. There we go down the bottom. So we can say that is our zip. This is our state. City. And street. And you'll notice that as I do these manipulations, it's adding steps. There is my step where I split by the comma. This is change type. This is where I've renamed columns. Here's my fill down. And you'll see there's also an X in there too. So if you ever do something, it's like wasn't quite what you intended, you can actually just click the X to remove the step and it'll go back for you. Now suppose we actually don't want all of these columns. Here on this one, we can actually pick Choose Columns, and it's given us a list of everything that's in our file. So suppose we don't actually care about the phone number, the MSRP, uh, the status, and we'll keep it. We'll keep the rest of these for now. So now it's actually removed those columns for us, so we don't have to bring in any more data than we actually want to have. Now we can actually do some calculations as well. We can either have created this in the end and brought it in as a table in Excel and coded formulas, or since we're in here transforming the data anyway, we can actually program a step to do some of the calculations. Now within each order, we can see the quantity that a customer ordered and we have the cost for each of those items. Now that's not the price at which you sold it to the customer, that's your cost in acquiring that individual piece. So if we multiply together the quantity order times the cost of each one, it'll give us the total cost to us for each of those transactions. So if we highlight both of those columns and click product, you can see that it's created a multiplication column. So it has multiplied those two things individually and we can now rename this and say, this is our total cost. Now with a total cost column, and if we scroll to the left, we'll recall that we also have a sales column. If we subtract these two, we can get our total profit. So if we go up here, I'm on the tab that says add column, 
And I'm just going to go to the standard functions and I can say I would like to subtract these two. Now it's created another column but you'll notice I've actually done them backwards so I got all of these negative signs. That's not quite what I wanted. So what I can actually do is go oops nope that's not quite it. I can hit the little x and then if I calculate the other direction I can pick my sales column first so I want sales minus total cost click standard and hit subtract now you can see that I've got a positive profit now for this particular client you can also see that we have a lot of information that's popping up at zero profit that's kind of indicating to us that they sold quite a few items at cost so again we can rename this column and call it profit. Now you can keep on going, you can explore different manipulations that's available in Power Query, but suppose this is all we wanted to do for now. We're now prepared to load this data and create some charts. How do you actually get out of Power Query and get back to Excel? So if you click on File, you want to hit this function right here that says Close and Load. And if you give it a moment, you'll see what it creates for you. So by the format, you kind of recognize this as an Excel table. So we've got all of this information now, and it's in the format that we did. Now, what happens if you actually wanted to go back and play with this again, do some additional steps? So you can actually go in here and under data, click on the queries, double click that and it just puts you right back into Power Query so you can start to change the list of steps that you created. Now if you're like me and you spend a lot more time in Microsoft Power BI than Excel, I'll show you how to use Power Query inside this tool as well. Again, it's virtually identical so if you're more comfortable with Excel over Power BI, perfectly fine. So the first thing we want to do is the same as before. We want to tell it where is our data that we need to go get. So we select our Excel file. And now it starts to look familiar. So this is the same sales order data tab that we had before because we're pointing to the exact same file. And you'll start to see here's that blank information that we started with. So very similar to Power Query in Excel. You had that choice of load or transform. Same again, you click transform and you start to work through the same type of steps. I won't take you through all of them, but you can see it's identical. You can manipulate it here. It starts to record your steps for automation. And the only very small difference is that when we were in the Excel one, it was a close and load, I believe. In this one, it's close and apply. It's just a little bit different wording. So it's now loaded our data and you go, oh, wait, this isn't Excel, so I don't actually see my data. But if you're familiar with Power BI, you know that you could click over here and you can see the data information right here. I hope you found this video useful and that it will save you a lot of time. I will put a link down in the notes or the text to tell you where you can get the sample file if you want to load that file and try some of these data manipulations yourselves.